uh, this is the robotics project for EE2101 circuit slab and uh, today I will be showing you how to build this robotics kit and uh, we have all the components here on the table and uh, let's start with the components these are the LEDs uh, we have the connector the IC beds uh, here you attach your ICs onto this and this is mounted on the printed circuit board we have a speaker photo transistors uh, capacitors the capacitors are of different types they are polar non-polar this one here is an electrolytic capacitor if you look into it uh, here you can see uh, that there are minus negative uh, the negative sign and this indicates the negative terminal and the longer terminal is all the longer the terminal represented by the longer le leg is the positive or you can go with the visual marks here and here we have uh, single pole double throw switch, a diode, a single pole single throw switches, a crystal oscillator that we need for the microcontroller. We have uh, resistors, uh, high watt resistors, ceramic capacitors here. The ceramic capacitors, uh, they are non-polar. Uh, the other capacitors, they were polar. And now, uh, here we have the hardware to mount the motors on the printed circuit board, the screws of different size, nuts and bolts and all that stuff. Here we have a sliding switch. This is um, this can be mounted on the PCB. Uh, if we go further, we have the shorting plugs or jumpers. You know, if you if you want to short two terminals like like these, we can just put one on top. This will be used for the battery connectors. We have the wheels for the robot. Uh, we have transistors. Uh, this is a power transistor, and uh, we have a serial port that you guys can use to program your micro uh, program your robot. Uh, program the microcontroller on the robot and uh, we have a couple of ICs that we'll need for different functions uh, We have two motors one for the left one for the right and a couple of wires for the, for the connection a battery holder and batteries And uh, this is the last thing the printed circuit board now. This is this is um, this circuit board has everything marked on it um, if you see um, this is the part where we place objects like this is the top uh, this is the top part and this is the bottom part here we do all the soldering all the soldering work is done on this side here we place the components on top and it is clearly labeled with what component uh, which component needs to go where okay and um, we have additional data data uh, material with this uh, toolkit and the one has the, all the assembly instructions. It explains what the components are, what they do, and everything. Uh, and the other one is the component list that we have. Oh, this is uh, this is the robot operation. Uh, in this particular file, we also have the component list. And an ideal way, the way I would recommend to start is going from this uh, from the top to bottom. Um, attach soldering every component in the way it's mentioned in, in the order it's mentioned then here we also have the instructions for mounting the motor and that's pretty much it um, I will show you I, I will explain how to solder these components the right way it needs to be done right and safe way and um, that's that's it that will be part two to uh, mount these components and solder them and uh, let's look at the tools we would need. This is the soldering iron. Uh, at ST, the ones we have, uh, I would recommend turning this to the highest level. You know, it's, uh, otherwise they don't get really, they don't get to that high temperature. And uh, these, um, these sponges, they should be wet. You know, uh, it helps to clean the solder, uh, solder iron. Uh, here we have a wire stripper, a plier, and a wire cutter. Uh, this will need to cut off the leads uh, of the mounted components and wire stripper uh, we need to if we need to strip something we'll use that in that case and this I particularly recommend for uh, bending the legs to a, a good angle and uh, to holding ICs and all that stuff this is the uh, soldering wire it has uh, it is lead and 10 50 percent do not chew it or anything uh, other than that you should begin uh, uh, these are the um, we need them to uh, tight the screws and all that stuff and here we have the safety goggles uh, they're important um, while 
you will need them to uh, put on when you are cutting off the leaves because they might flow, fly and get into your eyes. And uh, the first step would be to uh, mount this on on the uh, mount this on this holder. Here we have one. Uh, we need to this uh, this should be uh, like you can use this in a different ways, whatever the way you you are comfortable with. It. So, um, this is how we can mount uh, the PCB. Now, the um, I would recommend using this in a way that you feel more comfortable. Everybody has a more dominant hand, and you know. Uh, it's, it's up to you how you want to use this. Um, for, you don't need to use it for every single component, but for, for uh, with the components that have more than one legs, more than two legs. So it would be um, best to use this. And uh, let's start with the resistors. We got a simple resistor, we got resistor. Uh, okay, the good thing about these resistors is uh, you can find their value using uh, a multimeter, or they have these colored bands on it. And if you know how to read them, it, you can just look at them and you, you know like what's the value. Like I can tell this is a 10K resistor. The first component we're gonna solder is, is a resistor. These resistors have these bands on them. Uh, it's a four band code. The uh, first band represents the first digit. Then we have the second digit and the third digit is a multiplier. Like uh, it depends they, if there are three digits. Um, the third, the third band can be a multiplier or it can be a digit, you know, it depends upon how many number of bands are there. Like in this particular case, we have only three bands. The first one is a brown, then a black, and then orange. This is a 10K resistor. Now, let's let's look at this pretty circuit board and see uh, where we need to mount this 10K resistor. Okay, uh, one, one more thing. With this uh, manual, we, uh, it specifies which resistor and what uh, what number what is the reference number so for 10k resistor brown black orange gold the reference is r1 to 13 18 27 28 right so we we have to find where r1 is and um, it's kind of small written but it shouldn't be much so uh, here uh, we need to mount this r1 here represents 10k and what I'm gonna do, the the way I like to do it, the way I would do it is that I would uh, use this plier and bend these legs at a 90 degree angle. It's it's really easy if you use this plier. People do this by hand, and it's 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 not so good. So this is how we do it. We bend these legs at 90 degree, and uh, uh, after bending these legs to 90 degree. Uh, we can mount this up here. It, it makes the job easy, and uh, it's it's always good to place this component as close to the circuit board as possible. So I'm going to pull this leg on one side, and once I have this component in the right place, I'm going to uh, solder it. Usually, it gets a bit hot, so you might be you should be careful about that you know you can use uh, you can mount this up here and uh, solder this if you want you can uh, this is uh, I, I recommend using this holder it makes your job easy um, you can if you want you can spread out these legs a little so they don't fall off and uh, here we have the soldering wire uh, what I do is you know just you can uh, maybe cut off a piece or something or you can just use it uh, hold it in your hand it's always a good idea to make sure that the why it's nice and straight. Now the easiest way to do this, first make sure your the tip is clean, nice and clean. It works better that way. And, uh, and also make sure this uh, metallic uh, portion doesn't fall off. It sometimes happens, so you need to make sure that it's tight. Right. Now let's solder this resistor up here. Uh, the, uh, I don't know, uh, the solder iron seems, seems pretty hot, so shouldn't be, should be quick. Uh, see, there it goes one leg, and uh, it's a good idea to keep this um, solder tip as close to the leg, and just uh, touch the solder wire, and it should be uh, it should be good to go. Uh, when you solder, make sure. Uh, there is no dry joints like um, the hole 
or the the wire it should be completely filled with the solder paste right with the soldering uh, with the soldering wire melted soldering wire and uh, once it's done uh, the way I would recommend cutting off these leads is uh, face it away from your face like uh, this bow should be facing away from your face and you just chip off the legs so uh, here we go so we have the first component mounted here it's the resistor and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to solder one particular type one type of each component all right so uh, for the second step what we do is we will go to the diode in this particular robot we have only one diode and now the diode is a polar component all right so it has this band and we need to make sure that uh, this band goes in the it's we connect this to the inner right way and um, so the diode is numbered as uh, D5 and on this particular board uh, here this is the symbol for the diode okay now it says D1 but uh, since we know there is only one diode and uh, so this is a printing mistake so this should go here now what we do is we use this plier bend off the legs at 90 degrees Now I'm gonna mount this here. So this band should match the band on the uh, on the printed circuit board. This goes in here. Now to make this as close to the surface, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the legs from the other side. Pull the legs and press the diode a little, so it's nicely mounted. And now I'm gonna solder this. This. Uh, the solder wire already has a coating of flux, so you don't need additional flux. That's. Now I'm uh, mounting, this is the diode that I'm mounting. Just got a little bit of solder here and a uh, diode solder. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the legs. Yeah, and sometimes these fly, so you know, it's, it's the best way to do it would be like this, facing it away from your face. Okay, uh, once we got this, now here it says infrared emitter, so we need the IR LEDs. And uh, these white LEDs, these transparent looking LEDs, they are the IR emitters. And we have to uh, keep in mind the, of the polarity. LEDs are polar. These are also another form of diodes, light emitting diodes. And, uh, so here, this transparent looking, uh, this the symbol here without, uh, without the white stuff in between represents the IR emitter. And uh, so it shows the longer leg and the smaller leg. So this is the way we put it in now uh, one thing we should know is that here so this is going to act as a sensor and it should be as close to the wheel spoke wheel spokes as possible so this the, the wheel will be uh, mounted somewhere here in the sensor the, this IR it will emit uh, infrared rays and it will be picked up by another sensor so it should be as close to the spoke as possible for accuracy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let it, you know, go a little to the edge. It doesn't needs to be. Uh, I'm gonna keep it a little high so I can then press it and move it forward towards the outside. So.
Uh, tips need to be clean. By the way, this is what, what happens. Um, keeping tips clean always helps. And, uh, usually it shouldn't take time at all, unless there is dirt or something that's not right. So here we go. And uh, seems like we have a lot of debris from the earlier effort. Uh, I'll clean this a little bit more. And, uh, Seems like that's pretty solid. Okay. Now, uh, so what I have done is I haven't, uh, I have left this a little bit hanging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, press this, and so in case, in case, okay, we don't really have to do this all the time, but in case if the um, if the sensors are not able to detect this, uh, the rotations of the wheel, we can still press it and move it a little <coughs> further. Right? So that's why I've left a uh, little bit of room there. Now I'm going to chop off the leads. You know, all this faces. Okay, once we got this done, now uh, the other component on the list, the next component would be a resistor. 1 ohm 0 0.5 volt so this resistor has a higher voltage rating so if you look here these resistors are thick thicker okay so i'm gonna figure out where i need to uh mount them and uh where did it go uh here so it says uh r30 and 31 so i'm gonna look for r30 up here and uh okay um once we so so far we have the infrared uh, LED, the diode and the resistor and uh, now what we're gonna do is go with this high voltage resistor you know and, uh, put it in um, here uh, resistor is a non non-polar component it doesn't matter which way you insert it and uh, we got this you know, make sure you clean the leads the, uh, sorry, the soldering terminal. Uh, now I'm soldering this high voltage resistor and uh, just bring it close to the hole and that should do it. So it's it's really easy to solder this. All you have to do is bring this uh, soldering tip to as close to possible to the hole and just you know touch with this uh, soldering wire and it should be good. So we got this done and now uh, the next on the list is uh, so we uh, we already installed an LED and uh, these new these LEDs uh, they are also very similar like it's pretty much similar it's pretty, uh, except this they emit visible lights and you have to make sure that you uh, these are polar so you should the orientation of this uh, should be correct okay and uh, after this we have uh, a switch, a mini DPDT. So a mini switch, uh, it was somewhere there. And uh, this is the mini switch, all right? Uh, we got this and uh, I'm gonna mount this on this uh, circuit board. So now uh, taking out the leads is on this component. Okay. Uh, this is gonna go, uh, this is a six terminal switch. So we are looking for a six terminal, uh, six pin hole somewhere here. Um, okay. Here, uh, so here, uh, this is the, this is the place where, no, this is, this is a bigger, bigger, uh, bigger size switch. No. Uh, this is just a switch so there is no concept of polarity here so uh once i got this in here what i'm going to do is just you know, take some load some wire you know i think uh if, if you just cut off a piece of soldering wire it's it's more handy and uh, this works better so, uh, all right we got the switch in so this is Okay. 
make sure uh, you don't uh, solder the contacts together. We can do the other side. Can you focus on the board? Okay. Alright, so we got the switch down. And now moving. I'm going to show you how to uh, install this IC bed. And we look for this cut on the socket. And uh, here we go. So if, if, you, if you observe, like it's not going to go in, like, you know, in the in, in that simple way so we have to do some modifications uh, make sure the legs are all straight and uh, just bring it a little closer to the inside usually uh, usually this is the problems with the uh, ICs or most of the ICs like a lot of the ICs I would say most of them but uh, a lot of them uh, make sure that none of the legs are uh, bended more than that they should be Okay, once you got this going, uh, I'm going to insert this. Hmm. So this is how it's, uh, so now we have this mounted on and I'm going to solder this. So when, when you uh, solder the IC socket, you have to be careful that you don't uh, solder two of the legs together. So you need to be a little bit careful. It can be done really quick with a bit of practice. There we go. <laughs> These fumes are from the wax burning. This uh, IC socket is for the production of the ICs. The temperature uh, often goes uh, goes pretty high, so we don't want to damage our ICs. So this is what we do: we use this IC bends. You know, you should be careful when doing this. You have to make sure everything is sticking out. Uh, no legs is no leg is bent or anything. Uh, see if if you uh, observe here, what we did is we bent one of the legs, and uh, we would make sure that this is connected. And uh, what we can do is uh, either we can desolder it, or uh, we can find a you know we can have a trick or something. Um, I'm gonna worry about that later. So, socket okay, all uh, soldered up and uh, it should look neat and clean. Uh, no two pins should be uh, joined together. And after we are done with this, um, uh, I'm gonna show you how to solder a capacitor, a 22 picofarad 50 volts. Uh, should be one of these guys. Uh, 20, oh, it's a 22 picofarad 50 volts. So, it looks like it's going to be an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, these are microfarads, so it's a it's a picofarad. So I think it should be a ceramic capacitor. One of these guys. Uh, yeah, this is this is the one that we need, and. Uh, CNC2. Let me take a look. CNC2. Twenty-two 
42 picocurrent here. Right, uh, so C1 looking here. Uh, C13, C1. Here, C1, C2. These are uh, the C1 and C2, they go with the uh, with the next to the oscillator that I'm gonna solve later. And it's, it creates a phase lock loop there. It's used, used for that purpose. You know. Capacitor and uh, right. got that done. Mm. And what do we have here? Mm. We got the LEDs, the capacitor. I'm gonna uh, sort of a transistor BC547, pretty standard, uh, used in a lot of places. Transistor. So we, we got the transistor. Um, so now the transistor uh, it goes at three. Uh, no, Q1, Q2, and Q5. So I'm gonna look for Q1, or Q2, or Q5, whatever I can find. Whatever I can find. Uh, here we have the Q6, uh, Q1. This is. So uh, when you are installing this transistor, you have to make sure that the um, the flat side and the circle side they are like it's properly aligned and everything. I'm gonna push push the one of the legs a little backwards. And, uh, I'm gonna. Yeah. Once we got this in, um, should be close to the surface. Trying to keep things as close to the surface as possible. I'm just gonna solder it off. Right, we want the solder. The next step is we're going to connect a two pin connector and a two pin connector goes in U5 position. I'm going to have to pick up a two pin connector. This is a two pin connector uh, and it goes in the U5, it's numbered, it's labeled as U5. So I'm going to look in here, it should be, these two pins are, oh this is for A, A B and C. Huh. Oh, connect and connect here. Yeah, here, sorry, it's not labeled as some U. Uh, okay, with these two pin connectors, what we need to uh, take care of is the longer side stays up. So we have to solder uh, this other side. And uh, shouldn't be a tough job at all. So here goes the two pin connector. Uh, next one we have here is a, a slide switch capacitors, piece of speaker. We got the speaker, you know, I'm gonna mount this on. It shouldn't be too hard to identify here. It has, uh, it doesn't have any polarity and it's pretty straightforward, forward to front end. 
And uh, we got this up here. Okay, we have the speaker, we got the transistors. Uh, it's, uh, now we have to, I'm gonna show how to uh, mount a particular, uh, how to mount a motor and all. We need to start with the um, connectors. Uh, we need to start with screws and nuts. That's what we're gonna do. Pause. Now I'm gonna install this uh, power transistor. So this area, it's for the heat radiation and you know, you need to screw this. Um, so make sure uh, the legs are not all the way in because this is going to bend and lay on top of this. So this is what we're going to do. Just to make sure it's, it is, the hole matches. And, uh, So we got this in, we, you can either screw them directly or you know, uh, if you're kind of confident, you can just uh, solder it, you know, uh, make sure the hole is perfectly uh, aligned. Now, I'm just gonna go in and solder this. So we got the solder, and, uh, so see, the hole is perfectly aligned, and that's what we wanted. Yeah, I'm cut this off. All right, we have this out of our way, and uh, a piezo like uh, a crystal oscillator, important for uh, running this controller. And uh, just uh, really really easy to install this, uh, to solder this. Yeah. All right, we got some solder on our soldering iron. And there we go. Right, now I'm gonna install the serial port, DB9. Uh, it's gonna go over here. And it's it's by pure common sense, we know that it should be facing outwards. And, uh, Try not to bend the legs, otherwise, you know, it could be. All right, so it goes in pretty easily. Now, all we have to do is solder all these legs. Turn it in really quick. All right, we got this done. Uh, if you want, you can, you know, fill in. Uh, what you can do is either you can bend this in a way, like, or you can just leave this alone. It shouldn't be a problem in any way. All right. So we got this turned. Uh, we got next. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to how to uh, install, how to put on a microcontroller. You need to know that microcontrollers, uh, due to the electrostatic discharge and all. You should avoid touching the uh, the pins by your hands. We don't want any static charge up there, which can uh, damage these ICs. And make sure all these legs, they are perfectly straight. And it's always a good idea to bend these legs a little bit inwards. Only one side, we don't want to bend both the sides. No, just, just, just the one side. And, uh, once we got that done, and uh, if you have to make sure that it's perfectly aligned, look for the cut. And uh, first insert or first part, uh, one of the side a little bit, so you know, it has a grip. Okay. We 
have that one part uh, we can see the other part here yeah uh, it's 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 a little bit offset pass me the screwdriver so now what i'm going to do is press them a little bit so it's so it's so you know with with a little bit of alignment it's it should it should go in here we go uh, so this is how it looks like and it's neatly installed and now the one of the uh, bigger hurdles is installing the wheel and the motor so I'm going to show you how to do that so uh, now I'm going to show you how to install the motor you know so first if you look into the diagram we have two wires attached to it like the way I would do it is I would first attach two wires uh, there goes a white wire and there goes a green wire and uh, if you look into it uh, so this is how it, it it should it should be like this is the way it's shown in figure in this particular orientation now I'm going to attach a white wire to the top and a green wire to the bottom so we have a white wire this is going to go on top Solder it properly so it doesn't come off. And uh, with enough solder, it should it wouldn't, it wouldn't come off. Make sure you don't melt the plastic or anything around it. <coughs> so we got the white wire and we have the green wire. <coughs> here we have all the instructions just in case if you guys want to you know, uh, if you guys are lost and you don't know how to do anything you can always use this uh, reference material and so the first step says attach the inside angle bracket to the motor using a four number four tapping screw so attach the inside angle bracket so So this is how it's going to be. Um, if you look into this diagram, so this is focus here. So if you look into this diagram, so this is how this the orientation is. So what we want is we want to first attach the inside bracket. You know, we want to attach the inside bracket here uh, using a four number four tapping screw. So this is not the right bracket. This should be a smaller bracket here. Or uh, give me another bracket from there. As you know. And uh, there are two holes. One is bigger and one is smaller. We have to look for a number four tapping screw. And if you look into the nine pound. Number four tapping screw is this, the flat one. So I'm going to use this. Put it up here. And just mount it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to screw this in tightly. So uh, this one has a bit of trouble going in, so I'm going to use the uh, other board. I'm 
I'm gonna see if the screw fits at all. Uh, we might have to use another screw. Yeah, it seems like uh, yeah, it seems like we have to use another screw. Uh, something that yeah, this one uh, should work. So I'm gonna use this. Even though it says uh, use the flat looking screw, but you know, we have to always uh, make some arrangements, you know, for ourselves to make sure everything's in order. Okay, it seems to be fairly tight. There is a little bit of play, but uh, it's a cheap, uh, it's a cheap robotic kit, so we can't really help. Right. Okay, we got this one on, and uh, the second step would be to to mount another screw on the board and that should go here it should look like this and, uh, give me a pass me another screw so, oh, this was the screw that you need to go on. Screw. I'm gonna hook another bracket. Uh, there was another bracket. Where is another bracket? Give me a bracket. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm holding one bracket already. Um, I'm gonna connect a nut. Something that's gonna fit this. So to to make sure this is all tight and ties uh, tied and nice, you have to uh, hold it from one side like this and then a screw from top and this one is going to be uh, pretty sturdy at least as sturdy as it can be this is how we uh, mount this motor and as you can see uh, this point should be coming out and this is where I'm gonna mount the wheel and we need one more screw to just you know go in there and uh, I will need a board for that too. So, okay, we have this, and uh, we have a bolt. Well, it might be a good idea to just. Key is to uh, hold this uh, nut from one side. You know, and tighten the screw from top. This is what we're gonna do. It's a pretty solid tight. You know, to make sure the other screws and everything is properly tight. It seems like a pretty solid. Uh, it's fixed pretty solid. Uh, you can also move right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so I'm gonna mount this wheel up top here. Um, you have to look in, you know. Um, you have to meet, match this. Uh, what you... And just press a bit hard. It takes a bit of force, and there you go. So we got. Uh, so I have shown pretty much the mounting steps for all the important components and whatever we have missed and. It's uh, whatever I'm not showing right now. It's, uh, it's similar to what we have done. So I hope this helps you out and uh, should be good enough for you to build your own robot.